Demand for physical gold and silver surged last year as smart investors sought safe haven from a record-breaking expansion in the money supply, record federal budget deficits, and quantitative easing set to infinity. Sales of U.S. gold and silver bullion coins at the U.S. Mint hit a four-year high in 2020. The Mint sold 884,000 ounces of American Gold Eagle coins last year. It was a 455% increase over the 152,000 ounces sold in 2019. It was the highest level of gold coin sales since 2016. American Silver Eagle sales increased by 101% with 30.01 million ounces sold in 2020. Coin sales surged despite supply chain issues due to government lockdowns around the globe. The U.S. Mint had to temporarily shut down production at its New York facility in April due to COVID-19. Due to production cuts, there were no half, quarter, or tenth-ounce Gold Eagle coins available several months last year. With demand high and supply short, premiums on gold and silver coins skyrocketed. When spot silver hit its low of around $12 an ounce in March, premiums shot up as high as $12 a coin. The busiest month of the year was March. The U.S. Mint sold 151,500 ounces of gold eagles and 5,482,500 ounces of silver eagle coins in that month alone. In fact, the Mint completely sold out of American silver eagle coins in March. The second biggest month for gold coin demand was in August when the price of the yellow metal broke its all-time high and briefly pushed above $2,000 an ounce. The U.S. Mint sold 121,000 ounces of gold eagles that month. Demand for physical gold should remain brisk in 2021. There is no end in sight to the borrowing, spending and money printing. Peter Schiff has been predicting inflation pressures will ramp up significantly in the coming year. In fact, we're already seeing the impacts of a weakening dollar. For instance, import costs have doubled and in some cases tripled. Commodity and agricultural prices are up. We are really going to reap the whirlwind of the inflation winds that we have been sowing for years, but particularly ever since COVID, Peter said of 2021. And the Federal Reserve has made it clear it's not particularly worried about inflation. In fact, it has moved its policy goalposts to let inflation run hot. Inflation is bad news for consumers, but it's good for gold and silver. The year 2020 will not go down as a banner year, but it was fantastic for gold and silver. Both metals charted their best years since 2010. On New Year's Eve 2019, gold was trading at $1,520.90. It closed the year at $1,892.90 for a 24.5% gain. Gold endured a lot of volatility in 2020. After pushing above $1,650 in early March, it dropped below $1,500 briefly as economies locked down for the pandemic, but quickly rebounded and charged to a new record over $2,000 an ounce in August. The fall months saw some profit-taking and gold fell as investors went risk-on with optimism about the coronavirus vaccine. But the yellow metal rallied late in the year primarily driven by the promise of more stimulus and a weakening dollar. In his last podcast of the year, Peter Schiff said he thinks dollar weakness will continue to drive gold higher in the coming year. You need more dollars if you want to buy euros or if you want to buy Swiss francs, or Japanese yen or Australian dollars, or any of these other fiat currencies. But if you want to buy an ounce of gold or you want to buy an ounce of silver, well then you need even more money. Because all fiat currencies are losing value. It's just that the dollar is losing it even faster than most of the other ones. And that is the trend that is really going to accelerate in 2021. Gold big 2020 gains follow on the heels of a 19% gain in 2019. Silver enjoyed even bigger rally in 2020, gaining about 48% of the year. In August, silver briefly pushed above $29 an ounce, but that wasn't near its all-time record of $50. A lot of analysts believe silver will take out that all-time high in 2021. Both Saxo Bank and Bloomberg Intelligence Project Silver will break that record in 2021, meaning the price would double within the next year. The white metal actually has a double top of around $50. It first got to that level in 1980 and then again in 2011. Historically, that would indicate once it breaks that level a third time, it has a long way to run up. The fundamentals are really good for silver as well. 
The push towards solar power and other green energy initiatives will support the silver market in the coming years. Solar power generation is expected to nearly double by 2025 according to a report released last summer by the Silver Institute. Meanwhile, silver mine output was hit hard by the pandemic. Production is projected to fall by 6.3% to about 780.1 million ounces in 2020. The big drop in silver output is largely a function of mine shutdowns due to coronavirus, but mine output was already trending down before the pandemic. Global mine production fell by 1.3% in 2019. Fundamentally, both silver and gold are monetary metals and monetary policy is the primary driver behind their gains. The Federal Reserve increased the money supply by a record amount last year. At the same time, the Fed's balance sheet has increased right along with the money supply. As of the week before Christmas, the balance sheet was at a record $7.404 trillion. The central bank has more than doubled the amount of treasuries on its balance sheet since the beginning of the year. The Federal Reserve has no exit strategy for this extraordinary and inflationary policy. Last year, the Federal Reserve moved the goalposts to allow inflation to run hot. There is no reason to think that the Fed will slow down the money printing in 2021 and that would indicate another good year for both gold and silver could be in the cards.